walked out onto the streets. They stopped traffic. And that's where we saw police getting slightly agitated at proceedings, coming out of their riot vans and donning riot gear. That only really seemed to, though, electrify some of those who are in attendance, who lobbed insults the way of the police, accusing them of brutality, accusing them of using excessive force. Of course, that is in reference as to what transpired late last evening. Now, we see at the moment, to my left is where one of the trouble spots is, and that's where the traffic has been dispersed. Some seeing this as a potential for police to move in, making sure the area is clear of any traffic before they do move in to disperse those who have amassed here today. Now, earlier on, there have been some minor scuffles between demonstrators and police, but nothing really so far in comparison to what transpired late last evening. That's when we saw police charging at protesters with their batons. They also fired rubber bullets in their direction. That's all resulted in about over 60 people being injured in proceedings. There are some police in those numbers as well, and about 30 people being detained as well. And there have been accusations since then of excessive use of force. Of course, this anti-austerity demonstration has taken place tonight and took place, place late last night. It's all been part of that uh, Occupy Congress movement or Surround Congress movement. The idea behind it being to try and force MPs to listen to their anti-austerity message, that they no longer want any cuts to health care, to education spending, to jobs and salaries. And when you're talking about Spain, really it is jobs that's the crucial issue. 25% the nation unemployed. That's particularly affecting those aged under 25. When you look at the crowd here tonight, take a cross section of that crowd, or well, many of them are coming into that bracket. Spoke with a number of protesters at the rally, all saying they won't give up until their message is heard. Among them, Victor San Pedro, an associate professor at King Juan Carlos University, says he saw police goading the protesters. What happened is that there were constant provocation of the police. They began to beat the people up in very small groups at 7 p.m. just to get the last scenes of daylight and to put fear to to yeah to, to scare the people so they wouldn't go there. At 9:30, they began to uh, beat on people. Of course, there were some demonstrators that behaved violently. It is despair of the population if the things are going to turn into a violent state. Uh, what I can tell you is that the Spanish population and the protesters, they don't want clashes. They don't want violence. They just want to overturn a government that betrayed all the full electoral proposals that they made to the population. The square by the Greek parliament and downtown Athens were scenes of chaos Wednesday with protesters throwing firebombs and police responding with tear gas. Greece itself is at a standstill with nationwide strikes paralyzing industry, transport and businesses. Up to a million people taking part in protests, around 50,000 in the streets around the parliament alone. The unrest over a third round of austerity being debated now by the government. If passed, it would mean deep slashes to pensions and a rise in the retirement age to 67. Attorney and law professor George Catragula says austerity has shown itself to be a path to disaster. It is a, a clear wrong recipe. It is a kind of recipe that is more lethal than uh, the medicines, more lethal than the disease itself. Because we see that these two years of, uh, of the austerity measures, the, uh, the debt has not decreased. It is now actually bigger than what it used to be, despite a haircut last year. And at the other uh, point of view, we have also the shrinking of the economy. So it's a kind of vicious circle. We cannot reduce the debt and stay we are making the economy worse and the lives of the people more miserable. We are at the edge of a social explosion, signs of a political implosion of the government itself. So I think that in the months to come, we are going to face a real political crisis besides the economic one. A Russian billionaire may pay a high price for not keeping his temper in check. Alexander Lebedev has been...